For over 110 million years, sea turtles have been swimming to and fro across the oceans. Confronted with several cycles of global warming and cooling, they have always been able to adapt their migrational behaviour, choosing different places to reproduce. The scattered islands of the Mozambican Channel are one of the sanctuaries where sea turtles come to perpetuate their species. Man has tried, during the last century, to exploit the islets of the Glorioso Archipelago, taking a heavy toll on the turtles. Since the 1970s, the Glorioso Islands have been made a natural reserve, thus inversing the tendency. The new cycle of global warming, accelerated by the emission of greenhouse gases, is hastening the erosion of the beaches, increasing the temperature of surface waters and modifying marine currents. Will the sea turtles be able to adapt? What impact will there be on their biology and notably on their migration? In an attempt to pierce the navigational secrets of these marine reptiles, a team of researchers will try to answer these questions. The Schuna Antiva is anchored in the middle of the Emerald Lagoon of the Grand Glorias. On the deck, the crew and some of the scientists get to work preparing the necessary material for their mission. Several trips will be necessary for the Colonia crew to unload everything. Stéphane Sission, the director of Colonia, joins Mathieu, a Réunionese student who's working on the edge of the beach. He's been here for three months and has already identified and ringed all the turtles come to lay their eggs on the island. His contribution will be precious when the moment comes to choose the females at the beginning of the laying season. For the homing program, a scientific term commonly used to describe the turtle's orientation mechanism. The CNRS of Montpellier and the University of Pisa have chosen the Glorioso Islands, a genuine real life-size laboratory, to study the turtle's orientation mechanisms when it comes to returning to reproduction sites, often seven hundreds of kilometers away. Stefan meets up with the team to test the equipment that will be used for transporting the turtles and the pens in which they will be kept. Bamboos and sacks will have to withstand weights of up to 200 kilos. The scientists get together for one last briefing. Valérie and Simon from the CNRS of Montpellier, Paolo from the Pisa University, Jérôme from Ifremer and the Colonia team made up of Romain, Hendrik and Stéphane. They decide how they will go about catching the turtles that night. The sun has gone down, only the moon casts its pale light. The prospecting can begin. The objective is too ambitious. Their experiment demands them to catch six green turtles. They have chosen the biggest beach on the island, several kilometers long. It's the turtles' favorite nesting beach. Thanks to the inventory and the rings fitted by Mathieu, the researchers spot and capture the females at the end of their first clutch. The sun is coming up and the turtles selected during the night have to be brought together before its rays become too strong. 
To be able to stop a turtle determined to get back into the sea, the pen has to be solid. Finally, it resists. The transportation of the turtles will be made much easier by using the tractor, normally reserved for the upkeep of the island. Not far from here, whilst the men are busy, a latecomer has just finished laying its eggs. As its neighbour is going off for a short trip in a tractor, the unbothered turtle slowly goes back into the protective waters of the lagoon. Arriving back at the camp, helping hands are welcomed. This extreme activity does not disrupt certain local habits. The green turtle chose, a long time ago, the sheltered shores of the Grand Glorioso for their immutable ritual of mating, birthing and thriving. Too occupied to admire the sight, Paolo prepares the equipment. His first task consists of sticking a magnetic tape on the head of the animal. This will interfere with its perception of the magnetic field. It will fall off after a few weeks. To fix the Argos beacon on the shell, Paolo uses an epoxy resin. This beacon will enable the turtle to be localized and the glue has to resist being banged against coral and other rocks onto which the turtle could rub itself. It's important to avoid putting alcohol on the contacts of the mer on the balise. Ça permet à la balise d'émettre seulement quand la tortue émerge à la surface pour respirer. Le reste du temps, la balise est en sommeil, ce qui permet d'économiser les pieds. This first night of catching didn't give the expected results. Only three of the turtles captured corresponded to the scientists' criteria of selection. Another night of watching and waiting is necessary. Throughout the day, the searchers take turns wetting the turtles in their base camp pen. Pour la plupart des animaux, un très bon moyen de tester euh, la manière dont ils naviguent est simplement de les prélever à leur site de, de ponte, à leur, à leur gîte, à leur nid, de les emmener loin de chez eux et de les relâcher et de voir de quelle manière ils arrivent à retourner chez eux. Donc euh, l'idée, c'est en fait d'utiliser deux types d'aimants différents. Certains aimants seront des aimants puissants qui seront mis ici sur la plage de ponte pour éventuellement perturber leur, leur perception du champ magnétique au niveau de la plage de ponte. Par contre, cet aimant-là sera enlevé au moment où les tortues seront transférées sur le bateau. Et puis on a un deuxième groupe de tortues pour lesquelles l'aimant sera beaucoup plus faible et sera simplement mis en mer au moment où les tortues seront relâchées. Et à ce moment-là, on espère perturber leur perception très fine de, du champ magnétique local et voir si, de cette manière, elles sont capables encore de, de naviguer de façon efficace. After two nights of walking up and down the kilometers of beaches around the island, six turtles are equipped. Early in the morning, the transshipment can begin. The process is not without difficulties. The dinghy speeds off towards Antsiva. The turtles are brought gently up onto the boat.
Everything was thought of to give them the most possible comfort. They travel on the deck in hammocks, first class. The course is set on the release zone. The scientists have set it at a distance of 100 nautical miles, about 192 kilometers, to the northwest of the Gloriosu Islands, a place equally distant from the other islands in the sector, so as not to influence the turtles in their journey back to their nesting beach. After a 24-hour journey, the Ansiva slows down. After a 24-hour journey, the Ansiva slows down. Jérôme with Paolo activate the Argos beacons and do one last check before releasing the turtles. They all work. The landing procedures are made difficult by an agitated sea. Stéphane, Tambo and Romain perform like acrobats on the tiny dinghy. One by one, the six turtles are set free. Putting 200 kilos back into the water is no sinecure, even if the creature is trying its best to participate. The sun is rising over the Grand Glorias. A few meters from the edge of the beach, something is emerging. A hundred baby turtles are bumping into each other in their rush to leave the hole in which they just hatched. It's a race to get to the sea. Sometimes they have to climb over obstacles. The predators are laying in wait. On the Grand Glorias, they are mainly terrestrial. Ansiva has gone on its second round, taking aboard the last six equipped turtles. At the military camp, Stefan contacts the CNRS using his satellite telephone. Thanks to the Argos beacons, the CNRS have been able to follow from Montpellier the progression of the first release of turtles. 200 km. Ok, bon bah super. Donc à partir de cet après-midi, il devrait y avoir des points pour les pour les six tortues euh, de la deuxième rotation. Merci, au revoir. Paolo, good oui. news. Turtle come max. Oh really? I have some new information about them. Because this one is very very near, about um, 45 kilometers to to Glorious. The processing of the information done after the mission reveals the turtles' trajectories. The grey trajectory shows the path of one of the four witness turtles equipped with a magnet. The path between the drop point and the beach of the Grand Glorias is relatively direct and will have lasted 13 days. One of the four turtles fitted with a strong magnet on the nesting beach is illustrated with a blue trajectory. The difference with the non-equipped turtles is hardly visible. On the other hand, the black trajectory of one of the turtles equipped with a magnet just before being released shows quite a disturbed path, which lasted for 34 days before finding its way back to its nesting beach. The first results seem to show that the interfering of the magnetic field during the trip around the island doesn't stop the turtles from coming back. But, when it's modified, even just a little, during the oceanic travelling, the turtles don't navigate as well and take much longer to get back to the island. 
Sea turtles, and especially green turtles, possess a whole range of senses that they use according to circumstances to locate themselves. The mission has shown us how important the use of the geomagnetic field is to them in their orientation process. But even when the field is disturbed, they are still able to locate themselves. In addition to magnetism, do they use other methods, like sea currents, the direction of the waves, the sun, the stars, or even smells to find their way? Turtles' navigational methods are still a mystery. An accurate analysis of the turtle's movements and the comparison with his environmental parameters will take several months. The scientists hope to be able to foresee any modifications in the sea turtle's migrational habits caused by the acceleration of climatical changes. It will then be possible to reorientate any conservational measures and thus participate in the survival of a species that existed on Earth long before man.